Welcome to Career Bits, the podcast of the University Career Center at UNC Charlotte. I'm Jay. And I'm Matthew, and I'm taking over Jay's duties for today because we have some amazing people on the line from both the University Career Center as well as one of our amazing partners, Disability in North Carolina. So we're going to deep dive in today around um, assisting, supporting um, applicants with disabilities, but then also if you identify as having a disability, we're also going to give you some good job search career types of tips. But let's first introduce the amazing people on today. So let's start first with the amazing Sue Ann. Hello, my name is Sue Ann. I am the new GA working with the Career Center, and my main focus is on disability outreach. And she's amazing. She's also a career coach. And I'm also a career coach. <laughs> yes. And then our other amazing, amazing, amazing person. I adore this lady. We've been working together now for over a year on disability inclusion at UNCC, and that is the executive director, Beth Butler from Disability in North Carolina. Thank you, Matthew. It is great to be here. Yes, I'm very excited about the, the partnership we have cultivated with UNC Charlotte and the great things that are happening there. So I'm very excited to be here. Awesome. So first things first, let's talk about disabilities, specifically the thing that I think we should just set as a ground rule. Um, what is something that you would like to tell employers the number one rule when it comes to creating an inclusive space for applicants with disabilities? So that's to get them into the application pool. Is there any advice either of you could provide to our employer partners? Well, I'll, I can start. I mean, I, th I think that's a that's a great question because that's probably one of the first things, right, that a company uh, asks uh, when they come to to join our organization and be a part of the work we do. Um, you know, I think authenticity is a big piece, right? Um, and that it is um, it's not just about uh, an initiative, right, that lasts for for the month of October, for example, as many know, National Disability Employment Awareness Month in October. But when candidates that that come to seek employment, uh, really, that that is a, a, a quick indicator as to the richness, right, of your commitment. Um, so I think authenticity is a big deal, which, which means what, right? When, um, when I'm trying to apply for a position, I think one of the first things I encourage job seekers to do is check out the website, right? There's so much information available about employers, um, through their, their social media platforms and so forth. Do your research ahead of time and really see um the 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 richness and again the depth of their commitment to diversity and inclusion and ensure that disability is a part of that strategy oh so Anne, from the student perspective like what is something that maybe you've learned through talking with students in career coaching advisement or even your own experiences what's been something that really you just go dang like that employer understands my community right what is it something that's maybe kind of set that off for you before? I think um, as a student who also works outside of the university, we're, we're, we're kind of furthered right now, but in normal circumstances, um, without these things happening, um, when I would work, I would, I think the, the ability for um, a company to really adapt is, um, is really important. How open-minded they are, how um, open are they to change? And it's not like we're asking them to change their whole mission statement and, and who they are. It's just, we're asking, for certain accommodations so that we can perform the essential functions that are required. And so uh, with, with that, I think a big part of it is, this is getting a little bit off topic, but now when I'm asking for accommodations, I keep in mind that I'm asking them to make something accessible, not just for me, 
but for the people that are going to come after me. Because I want the company to be able to have those things in place so that when the next person that comes that has a similar disability to mine, they don't need to go and ask because those are already in place. So we had to jump off of it real quick and then, and then to you too, Beth. Where's the best place for a student to start in learning about what are accommodations that they can request? And then, Beth, on your end of things, how can companies learn about what are those accommodations and, and what are some good strategies on uh, bringing themselves up to speed for it? So, Sue Ann, start, start with you first on the student end. I think I learned a lot of accommodation um, requests through, I use VR, which is a vocational rehab. And a lot of students who attend college or attend higher ed, um, they do have a VR counselor. And it's just through the state, it's it's paid for, it's, um, there's no charge to the student using it. But I think when it comes to uh, actual accommodations and what you can ask for, um, I think Beth would be a better person to answer that question. <laughs> Well, you know, so so from an employer perspective, right? And let me let me say this too, because I didn't say this in the intro. I'm a person with a disability as well, right? So I think that's important to to just put out there. And I'm always reminded to to you know to to say that out loud because looking at me, you wouldn't know that I had a disability. And so what we know is that 75 percent, right, of people with disabilities of the 57 million Americans with disabilities have non visible disabilities. Okay, so um, when we talk about accommodations, right, I think immediately we think of um, the individual that comes to an interview um, in a wheelchair, right, or someone that comes uh, with a, a cane or a service animal. Those are what we expect. Um, but it's it's those individuals that come with a non-visible disability that may need, for, for instance, um, assistive technology, right? So I'm legally blind and have been since birth, right? So I come with the uh, knowledge, right, and ex experience of having worked in past positions. And so I know if uh, I'm going to be made to to be working on a computer, right? I, I know what those um, assistive technology devices are that I'm going to need. Uh, if we're talking about a, a, a transition from college right into your first job, that may or may not be something I'm a, even aware of yet. So what we what we do and is is really work with our employers. Number one, we help to um, heighten their um, education, their confidence in engaging in these kinds of conversations. We call the interactive process, right? Or just how to have a conversation and be comfortable and confident by saying, hey, you know what, here at ABC Corporation, our goal is to make you as successful as we can make you, just like anyone else, right? So help us understand what that looks like for you. And then be quiet, right? Because at the end of the day, we don't know what that is. And, and be okay with that job seeker saying, you know, I'm not really sure. Here's what I found success with in the past or while I was a student. Um, I had a day planner that I used on a regular basis that helped me. Uh, I had, um, you know, a, a, a strategy where I, I had sticky notes that I stuck around to help remind me and prompt me to do certain tasks along the way. Very nominal, right? When we talk about expense and all those things. So just be flexible and be okay with, uh, with not having all those answers. Um, and then be sure to stop and ask the candidate. Sometimes it's the obvious, right? You're not expected to have all the answers. Ask the people that's coming to work for you, right? What their needs are. And then be prepared to, uh, to partner with, as you mentioned, uh, Sue Ann and vocational rehabilitation services. Um, you know, other, other agencies. I mean, you know, reaching out to disability in North Carolina, other employers that have been down this road that, that, um, that may have some really valuable information to share. Totally. Something that, you know, I always just, I can't quite wrap my brain around it. And, you know, I have a sister who has a disability um, and people have, it's like when people find out she has a disability and her disability is somewhat visible through, you know, physical aspects of her. 
And so people almost like forget how to act around her, right? Like, like, like she's another species or like a new discovery, you know? And it's, it's interesting. I can't, I can't wrap my brain around it. Even I've even noticed, like, if we have a student who comes in the office, I've, I've seen before, like, if a student comes in who, um, you know, can't see, like, students aren't really sure of that interaction. Like, do you give them your arm? Do you, like, how much do you help? Um, I would love to get y'all's feedback and insight. What's the best approach to offer assistance if it is needed? Um, what is, how should that all go? So, um, I'm on, also on the student advisor board for it disability services and we always advise people when we're doing presentations is to always ask do not assume so i have a friend um who is blind and if you just grab his arm and and say oh let's let's go this way this this way it's faster if he's going to class it's going to mess him up just because he's been trained by his mobility instructor to take a certain route and that's the route that he's supposed to take because of accessibility um for whatever reason and if someone goes in and just grabs him and and takes him away off the, that route it's going to mess him up so um there's always good intentions, but the impact of those intentions may not always be positive. And there's just no harm in asking, um, hey, can I, can I help you? Hey, can I pick this up for you? Hey, can I open this door? And if they say no, then respect that. But most of the time, um, people are going to be grateful that you've offered help. Yeah, and this is Beth. I would I would totally echo that. Um, that is so true, and it's something that is so um, not intended. You know, in many instances, right? Pa it, it, you know, individuals just step up and they they offer this assistance. And you're absolutely right. The individual may be again for safety reasons, right? Very concerned. Like, you know, and, and depending on what kind of day they're having, right, it may come off as really unfriendly and ungrateful, right? The reality is, it's safe, right? I think that the other thing we hear often is, um, you know, we're seeing more and more of this um, is service animals, right, in the workplace. And, um, and the, the first intent, right, the first d desire for so many is to reach out and just want to engage in that with that animal, right? Because I'm a dog lover. If you had a cat, I would, no, I'm kidding. I know you're going to have to do <laughs> If you had a cat coming <laughs> into work, like I really, you know, no. whatever, but I'm a dog person. Um, and so my first, you know, my first uh, instinct is to just reach out and start. And, and, and that is such a, uh, a detrimental thing to do uh, for those that have service animals, because those dogs are working and um, that their job is to, is to ensure that that individual that they're supporting stays safe right and is aware of where they are and so forth so um you raise a really good point uh sue Ann, that that um you know asking is is the is the first step i love that and beth would you uh mind just for our employer partners listening can you kind of give us a a, a five thousand foot view of disability in north carolina and what all you do to help support that inclusion Absolutely. I'd be happy to. So we are a business to business network. So, um, you know, Sue Ann mentioned vocational rehabilitation uh, services, which is a, a, a state uh, agency, right, that that helps to support individuals with disabilities. Our our focus is really helping businesses uh, get better, uh, empowering them to achieve disability inclusion and equality across their organization. And so you think, well, what does that mean? Well, we, I just, you know, I said earlier, so many companies have had diversity strategies for years now, right? We've talked about diversity. Uh, the, the key thing to understand is that some of those diversity, many of those diversity programs still don't specifically 
identify disability as a part of that diversity initiative. And so we have members and, and, um, and, and companies that come to us saying, we want to get better in this space, right? Um, and, and we need a partner to help us do that. Uh, our, our network businesses really are key in listening and learning from each other. Um, I'm an attorney as well. And so I've spent over 20 plus years on the corporate side. I didn't come from the nonprofit world. So, uh, so I understand the challenges as well, uh, as it relates to, um, the, the commitment to and wanting to move forward in creating a culture of inclusion. I also appreciate the risks that a company feels when they begin this work because of litigation, because, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. We hear that all the time, right? You think, okay, this is great. Let's do this. And then what happens? Well, something, you know, an, an error occurs, a manager says something they shouldn't, something happens, a person doesn't get hired. And, and so there's that fear of, gosh, if I don't get this completely right, then, you know, there's going to be consequences. And, and the reality is, there's consequences in dealing with people, right? Every time you make a hire, there's a risk associated with that. And what we have found and what our employer partners will tell you all day long, the commitment that you, the, 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 the passion and the commitment that you put into this work, it returns, I mean, unbelievably. In fact, there's even research out there now, right? That shows um, companies that are paying attention to this work are receiving 28% higher revenue. Okay. 28% higher revenue, two times net income and 30% uh, better on um, performance and economic profit margins. I mean, 30% higher uh, performance. So compared to those companies that are not doing anything in this disability inclusion space. So that is tremendous. Uh, when we think about a business case or a value return on investment, this is clearly one that, um, that is, is, is top of mind for many, many companies. And so we're here to help them on that journey. Um, it's not just about getting the accommodations, right? It's about accessibility. It's about leadership right? It's about your executive level leadership uh, and, and where, you know, where they are in this journey and getting that buy-in from the top down um, to say, yes, this matters. This matters. This population of individuals, the talent that's out there uh, is, is important to this organization. And we want to, we want to tap into that and we help them do that. That is fantastic information, Beth. Thank you for sharing. And Sue Ann, you as well. So some, some wrap up things, Sue Ann. If students want to meet with you or have a question or appointment, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Email. So my email is x like x ray, t r u o n g at uncc.edu. Fantastic. And Beth, if companies would like to work with Disability Inn and learn a little bit more about the resources that you can provide, what's the best way for them to contact you? Absolutely. So they can check out our website at di-nc.org and uh, email me directly at Beth, B-E-T-H, at disability in, and that's disabilityin.org. Fantastic. Well, thank you both again for providing such great information and also for leading this charge for a more inclusive and equitable workspace. Uh, that's what we're all here to do, and we're certainly glad to partner with you here at UNC Charlotte. Folks, thank you to everyone who's watching and listening to Career Bits. You can find Career Bits on all your favorite podcast outlets. Please leave us a positive review, share it with other folks, or if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the University Career Center's YouTube page. Lots of great information there, and you can always find the latest episode of Career Bits in the Career Bits playlist. So for Matthew and our guests, Suzanne and Beth, I'm Jay. We'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>